Hi, welcome. This is uh, Professor Ridge in Math 105, and today's lesson's on section, the review chapter, section one. Real numbers, the real numbers. So let's just review all the sets. So we have the natural numbers. Okay, so the natural numbers is the set that you use for counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, so on. And we use the symbol and you put an extra line on it. Or you can put an extra line there. The next set's the whole numbers. And we use a capital W for whole numbers. And the only difference between natural numbers and whole numbers is we put in zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, so on. Okay. Then the next set of numbers is the integers. And we use capital Z, again with an extra line in it, for integers. And they're the whole numbers plus the opposites. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, so on. Okay, and then the next set is the rational numbers. And we use Q, I put like an extra line like that, for the rational numbers. And rational numbers are the set of all um, numbers, we'll call it A over B, such that A and B are elements, are integers. So again, this fancy way of just saying um, this, um, they're all the numbers they can be expressed as a ratio of two integers. So an example would be like three fifths is a rational number. Two is a rational number because you can write two over one, of course. Okay. And irrational numbers, um, we use capital I. You can put like an extra line in there. Um, just the set of real numbers that are not rational. Some examples of uh, irrational numbers are like pi, because again, it's about 3.14159, goes on forever. So basically numbers that are non-repeating, non-terminating decimal numbers. Square root of 2, 1.414, and again, it never ends. So things like that are irrational. Okay, and then real numbers. We use the R, capital R, with an extra line on it. And again, that's the set. It's just all the rationals plus um, all the rationals plus their rationals. Okay, so the real numbers. Now, um, some notation, some symbols we use. Um, if you use an epsilon like that, that means um, is an element of, or you can say member of. A U like that is a subset. And then if you put a slash through either of those um, symbols, you just add the word not, is not an element. So if I slash that, just, say, isn't, just like you do with an equal, is not equal. So slash is not. So is not an element.
Okay, a subset a slash is not a subset. remind you what a subset is again so when all the elements of one set are elements of the second set we say that the first set is a subset of the second set so let me write that down let me give you an example so like if I said a is the set one two three and B is the set one two three four five then we can say A is a subset of B because everything that's in A, 1, 2, 3, is in B, 1, 2, 3. All right, so A is a subset of B. But B is not a subset of A because we have these extra numbers in B. All right, so that's what that means, subset. Okay, let's review. Let's review interval notation. So <clears throat> we have an open interval, meaning the endpoint is not included in the interval, and we use the notation A to B. The way we'd write it using sets, we'd say the set of X's such that A is less than X is less than B. And the way you would graph that is you put a line, you put open circles on a and B, or you can use parentheses. The book uses parentheses. I'm old school. I like the open circles, and then you shade in between. Okay, so that's the open interval from A to B. Then we could do um, a closed interval from A to B. So we use brackets. The so brackets indicate that the endpoints are included. So that's just like putting the equal sign on the less than symbols here. Okay, and then again, if you use the book notation, they have close, I mean, they use brackets for the, these points too, but I like old school. Put a dot, solid dot, and shade in between. All right. You can have half open, and it doesn't matter which one. Um, if one's closed and one's open, we say that's a half open interval. It could be A could be closed and B could be open. So the way that would look in in, in set notation, you're going to have A is going to have the equal to, and B is just the less than symbol. And again, so if I were to use the book notation, when we go to A, you're going to put a bracket here. When you go to B. You're going to put a parenthesis on that one. And the advantage of using that one, it's a little bit easier to see, <clears throat> you know, what's shaded and what's not. Because sometimes it's hard to tell what's shaded. I try to make it real obvious. There, anyway, there you go. Um, and then, of course, if you had, like, this would be an open interval. So I'm not going to copy all these down, but... If I went from A to infinity, X, set of all X is such that A is greater than, or X is greater than A, sorry. X is greater than A. So that would be, and I like the old school method of solid dot. Oh no, that's going to be an open dot. So we've got an A, open dot, and then shade to the right. And just, <clears throat> just so you know, whenever you use um, infinity or negative infinity, it's always a parenthesis. So if one end, if one end's going to infinity or negative infinity, then it, it has to be at least half open. It can be completely open or half open. So if I say I went from negative infinity to B, but B is closed, that's a half open interval. 
set of all x's such that x is less than or equal to b. And so again, I would go to b. Now it's closed at b, so I put a solid dot, or again, I can use a bracket. And then I shade to the left. Shade in my arrowhead. All right, so that's reviewing um, interval notation. Hopefully you remember that pretty well. If not, there's a review for you. All right, let's uh, review all the properties of equality, or properties of real numbers. So on page 5, I'll just copy them down for you, and then you can read through them. Okay, so the first set, um, A plus B equals B plus A, and A times B equals B times A. These are the commutative properties, all right? And what it says is that you can switch the order and you get the same answer. So that only works for add and multiply. Subtract and division, it's not commutative. Okay, so if I have 5 plus 8, that's the same thing as 8 plus 5. So you can switch the order. Okay, so th these next two are um, the associative ones. So we, we talked about grouping. So if you notice on the top, A plus B plus C, you, you can only add two numbers together. Um, just, you can only add two numbers together at once. So you got to do B plus C, get an answer, and then add A. And the associative prop says, well, it doesn't matter how you group it together. You can do A plus B, get an answer, and then add C, or the other way, and you'll get the same answer. So that's the associative property, grouping. Okay, the next property is called the additive identity property. If you pick any number plus zero or zero plus any number, you get the original number. Okay, that's called the additive identity property. The next one, if you take the opposite of A plus A or A plus the opposite of A, you're going to get zero. That's called the additive inverse property. These two rules for multiplying, um, you have different identity for multiplying, so the number when you multiply to get itself is 1. So a times 1, which equals 1 times a, is just a itself. And we, we use this property all the time. <clears throat> so a times 1 equals 1 times a, which is a. That's the multiplicative identity. And then um, the inverse for multiplying is just the reciprocal. So if I do a times the reciprocal of a, that's the same thing as, I can switch it around, 1 over a times a, you're just going to get 1. So that's the uh, multiplicative inverse. First we've got to exclude a cannot be 0 for this one, because you know 1 over a, if a was 0, it would be undefined. So 0 doesn't have a multiplicative inverse. Finally, the last one we're going to review here is the distributive property, which we know if we have A times the quantity B plus C, we can multiply both B and C with A and then add the result of those two. So A times B plus A times C. And that's the distributive property. All right, so the last thing to review here is um, absolute value. Okay, so we're going to define it the way we do it in algebra. So again, the geometric interpretation of absolute value is distance from zero. Um, but the way we define it as an algebraic function is we say, well, absolute value of A is equal to A if a is greater than or equal to zero. So what we're saying is if the number we put into this absolute value function, if it's greater than or equal to zero, so those are positive numbers or zero, you leave it alone. Just it's a. So absolute value of five, five is greater than zero, it's just five. Now if it's a negative number, then the absolute value if a is less than zero, see that's a negative number, what do you do to it? So if I want an absolute value of negative 3, for instance, you make it positive 3. So that 
the way we write that as a symbol is we take the opposite of it. We change the sign. So it's the opposite of A if A is negative. For example, absolute value of 5. Again, 5 is positive, so we're going to do the top one. You just leave it alone. If I take the absolute value of negative 3, negative 3 is negative, so that's the bottom function. And I take the opposite of negative 3. And normally, you don't write that down. You just do it, which is 3. Okay? All right, and then another thing you can use um, absolute value for is distance between two points on a number line. So for any real numbers A and B, the distance between A and B, the distance between A and B is the absolute value of A minus B, or equivalently, the absolute value of B minus A. So it doesn't matter the order because you're going to take the absolute value of it and you'll get the same answer once, once you take the absolute value. Okay, so if I want to find distance between um, two numbers, you just subtract the two numbers. The order doesn't matter because then you take the absolute value of it. All right. If I want to find the distance between negative 3 and 5, then I'm just going to say, you know, the distance equals the absolute value, negative 3 minus 5. Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. Absolute value of that is 8. All right, so that's pretty simple. All right, so that concludes the lesson for uh, the review section 1. Um, go to my math lab, complete your exercises there, and I'll see you next time.